hello guys what's up everyone so for the previous video i think my friend might have shown you how to use gcp with uh, collab and uh, how to set up your gcp account for this video i'll be showing you how to use gcp with vs code so that you can run your projects and homeworks using the linux environment so let's get started first thing is you just need to open your terminal and just write the simple command to create a public slash private key in your local machine so that is ssh dash minus key gen space minus t rsa space minus b4096 press enter it will be generating your public slash public uh, private rsa key pair and it will tell you to enter the file name in which you want to save the key so for that i just simply just copy this bit and then just paste it and change the last name to whatever you want i just add up ideal in the end that's it and then they tell you to enter passphrase you don't need to actually write anything over here you can just press enter and they'll tell you to re-enter the same thing just press enter again that's it your uh, basically your uh, key has been created right now now the next step is to add the public key that we have created to gcp for this step you will have to go to the directory where the key was saved uh, essentially we know that already it is in the .ssh file so for that uh, we first write ls from our main uh, folder and we can see that there is .ssh uh, folder on our main directories so basically from here just write cd .ssh you'll be into the .ssh folder and if you click if you write ls you can see the keys that we have created are over here essentially now to copy and paste our public uh, key we just need to write cat uh, the key name which is idrsa underscore idl dot pub and when you click enter you get this super weird string which we have to just copy the entire bit from ssh minus rsa to uh, till the user of your account and then just press ctrl c go to your gcp uh, uh, account and like when you go to your gcp account this is the first window that you'll be seeing and then you just press go to console and when you go to console uh, just click not now over here you write oh on the search bar this is h keys and over here we just need to essentially add our ssh key so just click on this ssh key area and control paste it and once you have done that just make sure that you remove everything after add including the add sign and make a double space after the two equal two signs and then you can just essentially save the key saving 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 and it'll take a moment to be saved and yep it's successfully saved so after creating our uh, key uh, and putting it into gcp our next step is to basically create the instance so we go over here and remove the ssh and you can see basically in the popular searches area the compute engine section if you cannot find that just write compute engine and yeah just click on it and it'll make you come to this page where it'll tell you to create the instance so we just create instance and over here uh it'll tell you to select your region and zone so usually in the first try it's very tough to always get correctly uh, uh to get your instance working because usually the region or zones are filled out most of the time and you'll need to like keep searching for the zones and regions where it is not filled out so for now i will try us west 4 and us best for b if it doesn't work we might need to redo it again with a different region and zone but that is totally fine uh, we go to the machine configuration areas in that we go to gpus uh, and over here nvidia t4 is usually enough for our assignments homeworks and projects uh, i have seen students use b100 so see over here v100 but if you see the cost of v100 it's like 1295 per month which is totally not worth it so let's just stick with t4 uh, number of gpus we'll keep it to one and the machine type instead of using standard we'll go to high memory and use n1 high mint 4 uh, with 26 gig memory that will be enough for i would say all your homeworks and hopefully even for your projects but that depends upon your project uh, so you click on it you'll get your monthly budget 
325 per month not bad i would say and we just keep going down and we go to the boot disk area we click change uh the size i would say i would recommend between 60 to 80 for most of your homeworks 80 being a good enough thing for all your homeworks and the version will change from linux 11 to let's say linux 10 i have seen people try doing a uh, the VS Code uh, setup with uh, Linux 11 but there are just too many bugs that keeps coming out and you will end up just like removing your hair at that point and so for that reason I would just say stick with Linux 10 and we click select and we create now we just wait for it to be created as you can see this is my fourth trial actually to create it but that's totally fine uh, it happens you just need to figure out what's the best uh, region and zone so we just keep waiting, waiting and waiting until we see this works or not. For that, let's just give it a few moments. Uh, usually you'll be see you'll see a green color tick on the status bar and you'll see an internal IP and external IP. At that point that means basically it works. So let's just wait. A few moments later. Yeah, so yep, as you can see over here, uh, it was created at last, so it's good. Uh, now uh, we can go on to basically uh, connect this to our VS Code. So now to do that, uh, we just need to go to our VS Code. So I'm going to VS Code. Uh, when you go to VS Code, you come with like this page and you just need to go to Remote Explorer over there. Sometimes uh, uh, you will not be having Remote Explorer if you have not used it before. So you need to go to Extensions, write SSH over here and basically just install this uh, bit. Once you install it, you'll automatically get this uh, Remote Explorer uh, part and you just click on it and on the SSH area, just write Add and it'll tell you to put the name of it. So over here, I'll just put ID up and it'll tell you to go to the config file. So we'll do that. So just press open config and here it is. So host IDL, host name, uh, and with host name, we'll also need to put something called identity file. Uh, and we'll also need to put user. So we just set that up for now. So. For the host name, we just essentially need to put our external IP address from GCP, which is over here. Just right, copy to clipboard, and then you just go to our VS Code again and paste it. That's it. And for your identity file, it's pretty simple. Uh, remember the area where we created our uh, SSH keys. So over here, basically, this is what we had given it. So we'll just copy paste this, control C and control B. Now for the user, we basically just need to go to our area where we put the key and see what's the user written over here. So it's written say it. I'll just write this, control C and VS Code, control B. All right and just make sure you save it and just refresh you'll get the ideal host written for us and that's pretty much it now we just need to go into it for that just click connect in current window and it'll take you over there so it'll tell you if you want to continue just press enter and give it a few moments and there you go. You are basically inside your uh, instance in, with your VS Code. Now that we have uh, uh, accessed our instance in uh, uh, with the help of uh, VS Code, now it's everything is pretty much straightforward. We just open the folder where we want to work. Usually, I just put it in the static directory itself. Click Enter, and you will reach this. Uh, but so basically now we just need to install what all packages we need over here just right over here new file uh, we'll name it as setup.sh so press enter and we need to basically just copy paste our uh, 
<clears throat> things that need to be set up over here so for that i'll be giving you a file as well uh the setup.sh file you'll just need to like uh copy this entire bit and paste it out over there but don't forget to change your kaggle username and your key which you'll be finding it in the kaggle's website so just press take this entire bit over here Control c go to vs code Control v and once you have done that uh, you just need to basically uh run this for that I have already put my uh, basically key and the username inside. Now I'll show you how to run it. Basically just go to terminal, new terminal, and from here just write sh set up dot sh and click enter. It'll start setting up everything for you. It'll say do you want to continue? Just write y and it will do all your setup for you. This may take around like maybe five to ten ish minutes uh, so for that we'll have to probably wait it out a few moments later now after everything has been installed uh, we can just type up some few commands to see whether everything has been done properly or not so the first thing we can do is type nvidia smi to see if the necessary gpu packages have been installed or not and let me click it Yep, so it looks like it's fine on that end and we can check our Python version by writing Python 3. Yep, we have 3.7.3 .3. and let's try importing torch. Yep, it looks like the torch module has been imported. Let's try creating torch and uh, tensor and try putting it inside our CUDA. So let's just put some random torch. Uh, uh, random tensor to CUDA and just like enter. It looks like it has been created and let's see if it's done properly. Just write an X. Yep, everything looks fine. So with that, uh, we have essentially concluded what uh, we needed uh, for uh, running the GCP with VS Code. Uh, everything works fine. Uh, now you can just go ahead and start doing your deep learning projects and homeworks with it. Uh, but uh, before I finish it out, I would say like one of the things that you would need to do is uh, once you finish using your uh, instance, you will stop your instance from going to your area over here. Uh, so to stop your instance, you just go to Compute Engine again. Yep, just go to Compute Engine and press stop that's pretty much it and then you can like just close out your window after it stopped yep after it stops you can just close out your window and when you try opening it again if you get an error uh, sometimes after doing it like for a lot of time there are chances you might get an error for counteracting that error you can just go to your file explorer in your computer go to the .ssh area and if you see there is something called known host written over here and just go to notepad just once uh, there will be like something written out over here a lot of text uh, you would just need to like clean that out like completely remove it and then just save that host area and close it and then try it again that will essentially like uh, help you get rid of that error uh, yep that's it that's all I had to say for the uh, video. Hope you guys enjoyed doing your deep learning experiments. Thank you.